On Thursday, December 16th of 2004, Nick Peterson, 18 years old, and some friend of his went over to West Beach, which is over in Australia. They went to the beach, very hot, nice day. They're out doing some scurfing, and that is where a boat pulls somebody on a surfboard. In this case, it was a small tri-fin surfboard that they were on. And Nick Peterson was driving the boat just before this attack happened. He's pulling a friend of his that's back there being doing the scurfing. He's driving the boat, and they stop, and they make their way back because they had just seen dolphins. Uh, Nick had mentioned that they had seen dolphins, and they wanted to get closer to the dolphins, so they turned and got, got closer to the dolphins. Then they went and picked up their buddy. Now, Nick switches places with the guy that's in the water. He gets on the board, and a few minutes after he is on the board, he's about 300 meters from shore, uh, somewhere from 300 to 400 meters from shore, and no telling of the depth of water, but he had been on the board for about three minutes and he fell off the board and that's when his friends that were on the boat, two of the three people on the boat witnessed the attack, said that it grabbed him by the arm and took him under. And when it took him under, it took him to the boat and took him underneath the boat to the other side of the boat. So now they're trying to hit it with the paddle. And they claim that another shark came up at the same time uh, just afterwards because the 15 foot shark that grabbed him by the arm took and dragged him under the boat, bit him in half right after he got him under the boat. So the friends are trying to hit it with the paddle and it bites their friend in half, pretty much just severing everything. Uh, it sounds like it bit him in the midsection, probably had him across the chest when it bit down on him, kind of like what sounds like happened to Luciano Costanzo. They try to get him out of the water. They can't help him. They paddle in. Now there's bathers in the water. There's people in the water on the beach and a lot of them are not aware of what's going on until the kids get in and they're screaming that their friends are attacked by sharks. Not one shark, but multiple sharks. And we'll get into that in a second, but then all of a sudden everybody on the beach knows what's happening. They launch a search, comes out, patrol boats, and they're able to just find body parts. Just little body parts here and there of them. Uh, the people that were in the boat, the friends of Nick had seen body, you know, pieces of the body float up to the surface, which is usually uh, buoyant things like pieces of lungs, um, maybe some of your organs that are light, lighter than the water and they float up. So it sounds like that's what they saw before they went in, but these kids were completely erect, they said. I don't blame them, traumatized, probably all in shock. Uh, it would surprise me if many of them talk about it much because you don't, like I said, you don't want to think about that. So now we get back to the two shark situation. Um, when I first heard about this attack, I thought that the attack happened next to the boat and the shark kind of bit him in half and did the go under and turn around and flip back up and get it again. Uh, but they're saying that this shark kind of tossed the body to another shark. Um, that wasn't what I thought when I thought that there would be one shark and you know two sharks is not out of the question you had the two sharks and the craziest thing I've ever seen in a, on a video the ones in the curl of the wave going after the surfer and one got him in the arm we haven't covered that yet so yeah it is confirmed that the only remains that were recovered were a couple pieces of lung which is the same as the case with Luciano Costanzo over in Costanzo over in Italy to where that's all they recovered of him too. That's a lot of times that's the case because those are buoyant and they'll float up and they can recover those. Doesn't mean that's all that's left, that's all they recovered. So Nick Peterson is wiped out by these sharks, but they're talking about it being two sharks. And they're saying that one of the sharks was larger than the other one. One of them's 16 feet and the other one's about 14 feet. So now here they got two different sizes of sharks. The kids had said that the shark was tossing the body. They were kind of playing with the body with each other. And we do have the curl of the waves on two, two great whites going after a surfer. One of them actually bit him in the arm. And we have this clip here that I have where the people have the meat, they're dragging the food, you know, the bait through the water. And two great whites of about the same size are going after it at the same time. And you can see, not only does it show that, that they're they don't have a problem with another one being in the area when they're trying to feed in that situation, 
but it also shows how smart they are that, that, that you know, that's a split second that they have to turn and it's almost instinctive that that shark was going to bite them and it stopped from doing it. So sharks can stop from biting you too in an instant and you can see it right there in that clip. So I don't think that two sharks going after the same prey is necessarily going to turn into some competitive thing where the one shark's going to want to stay out of the way. It might not be that situation. Now I'm not sure that this is one shark. I'm kind of confused if whether this is one shark or two. Now we're going to get into the last situation of this, this story and that is the part where um, as I reported in the last time that I covered this, Nick jumped in the water, taking places with that guy. As soon as he hit the water, the shark grabbed him by the shoulder and pulled him into the water. Um, I was wondering about that because none of the sh none of the newspaper clippings have that story. They all have that he was in the water and he was being pulled by it and he fell off the board. So now it answers the question of the GSAF. And this was done long before uh, Ralph Collier ended up going there. But it's the same thing that happened with the other attacks where I'm like, where are you coming up with this? Jack Roche, where it says that he had his spear gun and he was fighting off the Great White with the spear gun. When all the newspapers say, quote him as saying, I handed my spear gun to my buddy and I swam out and the shark bit me in the legs. And then we had James Oatley, where they copied from my boy H. David Baldrich's book and left everything out about the cut, about the wound. They didn't talk about the blood running down the legs. They didn't talk about anything. They took everything out that told you anything about the attack and wrote the rest of his wording, word for word. So then you get to their Nick Peterson attack and it starts out, it was a hot day and the water was full of swimmers. Nick Peterson, this I went through and I was doing my research on Nick and I was looking for as many different newspaper articles as I could find because when I don't find what I see in one of the reports, I start looking for more of one or looking for where the other one came from. So as I'm running through all these newspaper articles, I run across a book. I don't know the name of the book. Um, if you go ahead and you Google Nick Peterson and you run through all the stories, you'll find a book. I click on that book and that's the story. So <laughs> back in the day, the GSAF spent their time going through books, and that's why it's so much different than reality. They're not going by newspaper articles, they're going by books. I don't even go off the mammoth book of shark attacks. The only book I will use for shark attacks is the two shark attack books by H. David Baldrige, and that ends the list. I do not use books to, to back up anything I have, and anything I see in books is going to be second nature compared to newspaper articles. I always go with those first. So I appear to see they probably were taking it from Wikipedia when they weren't finding it in books. So they weren't even a, they weren't even researching these attacks and they not only were they not researching them but they're grabbing the most glorified exaggerated stories you can find because they're in books. Uh, they're, they're not in research articles. So that's what's happening with GSAF and I find that kind of amusing. So that's the story of Nick Peterson, a very tragic deal for everybody involved, the kids that had to see it, uh, Nick Peterson that had to go through it, and the shark that they ended up wanting to go out and kill. So they wanted to go out and kill this shark that they said is about 16 feet long. Uh, there was two boats that were ended up bothered by a 16 foot shark previously, like a week pr prior, not too far away, and then a uh, shark 16 foot chased swimmers out of, a out of the water in another beach location. So they wanted to go out and kill the shark. I don't know whether they did go out and kill the shark, but Nick Peterson's parents came out and said, we don't want you to kill that shark. And that's great on them to come out and say that, because like I said, I've, I did go through the comments and just glance at them and I saw a comment about how attacks would definitely drop if they killed off sharks. And that it, it's because there's more sharks that there's attacks. No, there's more shark there's more shark attacks because there's more people deeper in the water doing things than they were. And you can tell that just from my database here where I'm going through all of the years that we have and H. David Baldrich's research where he said most people stayed inside of 100 yards. Now you see people that are 500 yards offshore when they're just swimming half the time. So uh, people are doing more in the water. They're doing it 
a lot more in numbers and they're doing it a lot further out from shore and that is leading to running into the sharks and you can't pick and choose what shark is going to go into that area or into that beach or which shark is going to get desperate when we're talking about great whites have a rough patch of feeding and have to go after a human to be able to make up for the fact they can't catch something that they're normally after. That is not going to solve that problem, just like I said. So that's the story of Nick Peterson attack, uh, terrible predation, just like Luciano Costanzo over in the Med in Italy, and a fatality, and that's our story of Nick Peterson, 18 years old.